Welcome everybody. In this video, we're going to cover the composite design pattern. Now the composite design pattern is very, very similar to a tree data structure. So if you know that, you know, the composite design pattern, otherwise let's dig into it. The whole thing with the composite design pattern is that you have some kind of object or class. Usually you'd call it a node or a leaf, and it has reference to other nodes or leaves of the same type. And you can infinitely compose these nodes or leaves to represent something. Okay. So here is an example where we have a composite component. So the composite component is here. I define an interface, although an interface is not necessary at all. I'm using it here to highlight the fact that having the I component contain children of a collection of I component is kind of the whole shebang about composite design pattern. We've got a regular component, we got an ordinary component, and then we have a composite component. The regular and ordinary components do not contain any children and just print out their relevant names. The only reason the composite component is called composite is because I've decided to give it children and it actually contains other I components. Let's go ahead and dump the new composite component object. What we're going to see is the composite component has three children, regular, ordinary, and composite component. And then the composite component contains three children, regular component, ordinary component, and composite component. And then it goes on and on and on and, uh, you know, and on and on. And that's the whole thing about the composite component. Now, nothing is stopping me from basically saying, right, I want two composite components. And now when I do print this, I have two component composite components and those two composite components have two composite components and so on and so forth. Right. So you, as long as you understand that you can have this like infinite tree going down and the I component is the node or leaf in this structure and uh, regular component, ordinary component, composite component, those are all nodes. Oh, let me close that. So a node or a leaf contains other nodes or leaves. Let's take a look at a little bit of a easier real world example. If you've ever programmed in Java or if you've done university or anything like that, or you know data structures, here I have an implementation of a linked list. This is probably not the most correct implementation of a linked list, but here is where we utilize this composite structure where the linked list is the structure and then it, it links to the next nodes, right? So the linked list is really like a node in a sense that you can chain them infinitely and they're not lists. So this is not a true tree data structure. This is a linear one. As it works, you have a list you add and then you add again. So when you add the first time, what happens is you check if the next node is null. When you create the linked list, it is always going to be null. So if the next node is null, that means the current value isn't set. This is when we set the value and we attach the next node. Again, I don't think this is the most correct implementation. I didn't think about this too long. I was like, right, let's just get it working. I'm not sure if it's even working hundred percent correctly, but I was able to do something like this and uh, get kind of like expected behavior. Okay. But anyway, when we add the second item, uh, the next node, because we're always starting from the beginning. So we check is the current empty? If it is write the value, jump to the and bolt on the next slot. We write another value. We check, okay, we have written here. This one's empty, put the number here, right, uh, bolt on the next slot for, for the next value. Okay. And that's kind of like when you can actually create your own efficient uh, data structure. And uh, usually programming languages will already come with these, so you don't have to recreate them. But this is a very powerful concept that you can use and I'll show you out in a second. But this is essentially the way it works, right? So I put in four values in there. I then go ahead and try to extract the four values. And when I try to extract something at the fifth or fourth index, I get the index out of range exception. Okay. So uh, the linked list kind of works. I, I feel, I have a feeling that is not the hundred percent correct implementation. It looks a little bit dodgy to me. I just didn't spend the time to figure out what's wrong with it. This is another simple analogy to think of the tree data structure and the whole node thing. In this example, we're using products. If you think about a computer, how it's comprised of all little components, motherboard, graphics card, CPU processor, wires. Those are all little components. We are going to go down as far as to the case, screws and bolts. So each individual item 
is a node so the case will contain screws the motherboard and then the motherboard contains other nodes like the processor maybe a fan some wires transistors whatever each of those nodes have their own individual costs names identifiers however the tree structure has to start somewhere so it might start at the case and then the case is going to contain all the other components and uh, that's pretty much what i have here so i have the base abstract product class then i have a table and the table has a top so the actual thing that the stuff sits on it has a couple of legs and it has the screws to screw the legs to the top and then for the legs we have feed and padding and screws again so you don't just want metal pipes rubbing your expensive floor you, you know we got some padding we got some screws you don't care about your floor man and yeah, anyway, we screw. We have to screw the paddings onto the feet so they're nice and cushiony, and uh, we th we care about your floor here, okay? And uh, yeah, anyway, so you can see how we have a node table, and then the table has other nodes, other components that it's comprised of, and so on and so forth. So depending on what kind of structure you're trying to represent, a thing contains other things and uh, other and other things like a Russian doll matryoshka. The last uh, structure that I would like to show you is a very powerful concept. This is a, like uh, how programming languages can be built if you have a, you basically have expression trees. So even if I take link and try to print out the expression tree for this code, it will basically show you where you start and each one of these is a node. It will outline the scope where variables exist, where they don't exist so on and so forth, right? Uh, let's not look look at this because that is too complicated. What we're going to look at is this thing. So we have a top level instruction. To the top level instruction, we're adding second level instructions. So this would be something along the lines of this. Top, second level. So this is scope, right? So if we have a variable A here, we cannot use variable a here, right? So var b. All right, it's not. It doesn't know that it exists because it exists in this scope. So this is what I'm trying to dem demonstrate here. And then if we have the third level, third level exists in the second level. So here we have the third level. The top level to the top level nodes, we add the second level nodes zero, one, and two. The second level two node, I highlighted with a couple of dashes. Uh, just so it like gets printed out here and we can see it. Uh, yeah, level two. I again, I just added to the top level node. So it's top. Top contains these three nodes, and then to the level two node, I add other third level nodes and just another three. And I can keep doing this over and over again, and uh, well, to my heart's content. And if you have a programming language, you essentially have a dynamic array. So the first level would be the first scope and then you, you may have instruction, instruction and then scope would be another array within an array. And then again, just another value. Hopefully I didn't lose a bunch of you here, but uh, let's take a look at what I got here for the implementation of this. So the node itself is really simple. We just set some data on the node and then we have, again, the same thing. Tree data structure, we have references to other nodes. And then I have the compute node function where I have the parent scope. So in my case, I say nothing when I trigger this and I don't think I actually use this anywhere. So let's, uh, so let's bolt this on here. So parent scope and something like this. I'll run this again and here we go. So we're starting with nothing. So nothing start at the top. So it's this node that's being executed. And because I'm executing all the following nodes inside the compute nodes. So we start at the top level instruction all the nested instructions inside the top level instructions get executed. And if those nested instructions have any nested instructions, we execute those before we go on and execute the other ones. Okay, so this looks something like instruction one. While instruction one is running, if we have any state here, we can pass it to the bottom level instructions. So we have level zero and then, yeah, basically start end. And then uh, here we, again, we start, we end and this will be the level two, which I marked with the dashes start. We then go to the third level that got bolted on here and we go through it. And at the end, we end here and then we end the top, which got started here. So the, we can pretty much go ahead and move the whole instruction set to a higher scope. So let's say level two, one here again, I'll just level to one and instead of assigning it all to level two 
I'll assign it to level 2 1. So all the instructions are now going to be executed in between the other nodes. Let me run this. Obviously, don't forget the semicolon. But yeah, here it goes. Hopefully, you can see it. We started at the top. We're now near the top top scope. The first instruction. So this is this one. Then uh, the two one begins. So we're we still have our parent scope as top. And now we go into third level where the parent scope is second level one. Okay. So hopefully these names aren't too confusing and. Uh, the main idea here is that you understand the tree node structure. That's essentially all there is to the composite design pattern. It's not too complicated. And if you know recursion, it mixes really well with the composition design pattern. That's all. Thank you for watching. Whoa, hold up. Look, this is the stuff I used to torture myself on the weekends. Now, it takes time to digest this and package it up into these videos. So if you did enjoy the content, please like, subscribe if you want to see more, uh, leave a comment if you have any questions, and if you want to be part of the community that I'm building, make sure to join my Discord server. I also stream on Twitch Wednesdays and Sundays, 6 o'clock London time. I have also opened up a merch store, so if you do want to support me, don't just donate, buy from there. Links to all of that and my other social media are in the description. Hope to see you again, and have a good day.